Hey, songwriters, I'm excited to show you this super cool, easy technique for coming up with interesting, different sounding chord progressions that can sound complex and weird and advanced and can even be explained with some advanced theory, but we don't need to know that stuff. And I love that stuff. I love studying it and talking about it and I'll talk about it more, but this is a way to just get some sounds that work for you without needing to know why it works that is really fun and, and really cool. And there doesn't even always need to be an explanation for something either. Theory is always after the fact. Theory is always after, hey, somebody made a sound that was sounded weird, sounded like this, how can we explain it? So we're gonna go in for kind of just the sound and a way to get that sound. And like I said, it could come up with some theoretical options that you might stumble upon when studying harmony, but we're just gonna do it for the sake of connecting chords in a chord progression. This is really fun because it gets us out of the box of thinking of there are chords that we need to use that work together in certain kinds of ways. I'm definitely guilty of that, of kind of thinking too much about what is supposed to work and then trying to compose with that. This is just like uh, notes that are next to each other. What can we do with them? So let's take two chords to show you the example and then I'll do a whole chord progression with you. So for example, if we take the chord G and we take the chord C and we say you want to play a, a progression that's going to go from G to C. Very nice. Love the sound. I love songs that go back and forth between two, two chords. And I don't mean this at all to be that say that we want things always to sound weird or complex, but sometimes you do. Sometimes you just want that spicy flavor. And this is just to give you the option to throw that in there. So um, what we want to do is we want to look for where there are notes between the two chords that are a whole step apart. Okay. So for example, in G to C, we have the note D, this open D string, this fourth string. And on that string, ba, ba, it's gonna go up a whole step to this second fret on the fourth string. That's the third of C. Da, ba. This is kind of like the built-in melodies technique that I talked about in a past video, and I'll put a link right up here for that. It's looking at notes along one string at a time and seeing where they connect because I call them built-in melodies like I just sang that there. You could kind of pull out in the melody. So it's very related to that, but taking it kind of to the next level. Da, ba. This is D of the G chord. This is E of the C chord. Great lyrics. All it is, you find a whole step between two notes, like as if it's a voice that moves, right? As if it's a melody. And then you just connect a half step in between. That's it. That's all it is. So super simple, but we're going to walk through several, several examples to show how it can uh, really be applied. Da, da. So yeah, really different sound. And it happens to be a G augmented triad that we end up getting by doing that. But you don't need to have thought, okay, what's a chord that goes well to C or G augment? It's just, just explore the sounds, right? So yes, an augmented chord as the five of another chord is a great chord to kind of cause some tension and resolve and all of that. But again, we can we can realize that after the fact. We're just taking a whole step apart. Da, da, da. Okay. If we went back to G, you could go back with that same note. Da, and you get C minor. I'm playing a C minor shape like this. Here's probably the most common way to play C minor or like this. So many voicings we could use on the guitar, but the point is, you know, find your own way of, of doing it. Um, and I'll suggest some voicings at different times as well. The voicing thing can feel kind of important because if we're jumping around with shapes, it might not have the, you know, full pull and effect of voice leading where the individual note, the individual voice is going, you know, exactly that half step at a time and everything. So I, I love working out specific voice leading and different voicings and shapes on the guitar to be very precise. But even with just the most obvious shape you can find, if we went from D to B minor, we get another augmented chord there. So you'll see, of course, you know, augmented is gonna be a common one if you raise the five a half step uh, from any of the chords. So this voice leading works out really nicely. So 
that's it. But I want to walk you through an entire song idea to compose with this just to show you, you know, if we really saw this through, how it might work. Again, sometimes you might want that flavor, sometimes not. Very often, trying to find options, I have, I can feel that I might be overdoing the chromaticism, the chromatic notes being the out of the key ones, the, the connecting notes that we're adding in. But again, every so often, it might just absolutely hit the spot. So I want you to know of it as an option. So here's the progression I want to play with. I want to play with key of A. We're going to take the A chord, the E chord, the B minor chord, and the D chord. This is a one chord, five chord. This is the two chord, and this is the four chord. This happens to be the same progression as the song Just Like Heaven by The Cure, the one that goes so I wanted to take something you know, I heard that song today and I was like okay just take a normal normal chord progression um, diatonic being it's all in the key one chord five chord two chord four chord great now how can we connect them so let's just walk through it and do this there is a whole step between this note that is the second fret of a second fret uh, second string on the a chord it's the third of the chord and then that same string is going to have an open string for the E. So we have a connecting spot that we can use. Cool. Very moody. Very moody. This is like some modal mixture stuff. It could be explained with modal mixture. The Beatles use that kind of sound a lot. That chromaticism. Radiohead uses that kind of sound a lot. That chromaticism. So cool. We have one connecting. I'm going to connect all the chords. Again, this might be overdoing it. I want to do every single option though. So we got A. It happens to be A minor next. And then E. And then E is going to go to B minor. So again, I'm going to go ahead and make the E minor, because if we have that open G, it's going to go a half step down to one of the notes on B minor. I'm kind of walking through this fast because you already have enough to experiment with it on your own. I just want to have you hear the sound and how I might walk through it. So um, A minor, then, then E minor, then B minor, um, and then we're going to go to D. So this note here, this fourth fret on the third string, is the root of B, root of B minor. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that down. Ooh, great. We get a different kind of chord now because we had minor chords. We had augmented chords with our examples so far. You, again, you don't even have to know what they are. I just want you to be like, ooh, that's what I want. But this happens to be a minor major seven chord. So it's a minor triad with a major seven. And it's just perfect for passing through. Da, da, da. So it's and then landing on the D chord. That minor major seven passing thing is just its own progression altogether that's very, very common. It's like what Stairway to Heaven does. So that's its own kind of common progression when it's when it's moving through is when that's most often used. From D back to A. This second fret on the top string is there. I'm going to move it down a half step, make a D minor. So we get a lot of these minor chords, that's okay. Um, but you can hear it creating the tension, creating the pull. Cool. So here's our whole progression just with these standard chord shapes. starts over okay so once we have that now we want to look at okay cool that like and it might be a bit busy fine I'm gonna stick with it though and see can we compose something effective can we write a song with this and have it be really unique and stand out and I certainly don't believe music has to be unique or stand out I, I think it just has to be honest and be connected to what we're trying to express to be effective and to feel like the right thing. But um, it's, if it feels like the right thing and it's honest and effective, it doesn't hurt that it can be unique and, and stand out as well. So I think we can agree that this progression is 
much less common than the other one where I was just using the standard chords. And, you know, if I was really being discerning about this, I might use a couple of those and not all of them. But let's go ahead and compose with this. So the basic thing I wanted you to understand is just straight up that chord progression thing, just the connecting, find the whole step voice leading, and then connect it by a half step. So you have that now. So I'm not going to worry too much about explaining, showing diagrams or anything for this melody writing. I'm just going to kind of walk through it so you can say what, you know, what would it look like? I want to share with you, you know, what would it look like if I wanted to sit here and, and play with it um, some more. So um, sometimes I'll want to target the note that's actually moving, but a lot of times not because I feel like that is contrived sounding sometimes like always targeting that note that changes you know on a target it maybe sometimes and we have to just go with our intuition here just be creative um but what i'm thinking here is i if i play if i use this melody the five this is the five of a it gets to kind of stay constant while the chords move around it. So Okay, so I might move it, I might kind of make it a little more dynamic. So And then so I wanted to move da 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 and went up to the third of E. Da, ba, ba, ba. There I targeted the actual voice change. So I went now major third of E, ba, ba, minor third of E. So I'm feeling good about that. Dun, 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 Okay, well, I'm going to B minor. So I want to go to this note here. Those two notes, those three notes are in there. And I know that, you know, if you don't think this way on the guitar, that's why I'm saying, that's why I said kind of disclaimer that I'm just walking through it really quickly. I want to share this with you, though, because this is how I think of all whether I'm singing it, thinking it in my mind, hearing it, playing it, you know, when I'm composing I'm, and, you know, if I'm maybe writing backup parts or string parts, you know, I'm thinking on the fretboard how it all connects, you know, as a guitar player, it, it makes me a stronger guitar player, even if, you know, even if I'm thinking of something to play on the keyboard and I write it on the fretboard and I'll do that sometimes for sure. Um, so, da, da, ba, da, da, da. I'm aware of every single note in the melody writing where it lines up with the chord and 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 why and and why it you know why it's sounding like it fits with it cool well that inner motion is going to happen now and those three notes so i really like choosing these melody areas that don't have to change with the harmony changing so the harmony is kind of moving under it and again the beatles do this a lot a song that comes to mind is uh, julia where um there's just a constant melody and kind of harmony moving under it so um it's a way to make it very kind of kind of colorful without needing to you know follow this if you added backup vocals in though this moving stuff is prime for that oops You know, while there's maybe lyrics going uh, on the other melody. So, okay, let's continue on. Okay, so far we have. Okay, da, da, I want to come back down. Da, da, da. This note I'm singing right now is the root of D, so da. It's a great spot to just stay. Da, 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 da. And I can just da, 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 stay there. You know, when I go to that D minor. Da, 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 da. All right, here, this is very cool. Da, da, that if the progression wraps back around. Da, 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 da. 
da da da. Oh, I almost went da da. Um da da. Because I was thinking that at the beginning anyway. So da da. So it now it loops back around on itself really well. Cool. We have a melody for the whole thing. It's gonna go da da da. <clears throat> Let's see. Da 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 ba 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 da 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 ba 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 Da -da, da -da. So maybe a little busy? Yeah, maybe. You know, if I spent more time on it, I could maybe... I'm feeling right now like, yeah, maybe I'd make that a little more sparse. But I like it. I like it. And, you know, the the, harmo the harmony is is busy and then the melody is, is really taking up a lot of space too. But that's okay. We're going to see if we can just roll with it and, and keep going. All right, I'm gonna write some lyrics to it to have it feel like a real song and then also work out what exact voicings, what exact chord shapes do I wanna play uh, for that progression. Okay, I'm back. So I wrote lyrics and I worked out the exact voicings that I wanna use on the guitar and I also ended up writing a chorus or maybe it's a bridge. It's just a separate section to go away from that one idea and then come back a different chord progression with a different melody. So I'll walk through all of that stuff just so you can hear kind of how it is coming out. Um, I like to practice songwriting in the same way that I would practice anything, right? Like, okay, you, you just have to practice it, right? So I'm treating this a little bit like if I had to keep going with this idea, if I had to work with this progression, if I, if I had a song due in an hour, like let's write something, right? It doesn't have to be my opus or whatever, but it, I, I can exercise the ability to get into that creative space of at least having fun with it and having choices that feel um, somewhat expressive and, and honest again. So um, cool. So I'll just go ahead and play it for you and then talk about whatever else. The lyrics turned out to be about um, being paranoid about being a clone. So, which I am paranoid about that. I think about it all the time. In fact, I think I'm going to change my channel to mainly just talk about that. Okay, here we go. I get up in the morning and I'm trying to get going, but there's something that's deep in my bones that won't leave me alone. So I try to address it while I'm getting dressed, but there's nothing I own that can cover up this feeling of being a clone. That's right, you heard me right, so I drive out of town, I got the music loud. By now you know that I'm not messing around, I'm looking to find how I can clear my mind. I gotta do it before I run out of time, oh yeah. Of course, there needs to be a synthesizer in that song, right? Okay, so lyrics really bring it to life, and I'll often just use super placeholder lyrics just to, and or mumbly stuff, and I know a lot of people do that just to get it to feel human and, and like it's a emotional and, and thoughts are being processed. Um, notice the, the melody changes when, when you do that. It feels really too precise when I write it on the guitar and the fretboard. And, and that's really my way of doing it, you know, thinking very much on the fretboard. And then I'll try to get it, scale it back to be as organic as I can, fitting with the words, changing some of the rhythms and stuff like that, just based on how it feels that I can sing it. Sometimes I'll change it because I just like, eh, just can't sing it comfortably. My, my brain is just not hearing it in the way I want to, even though I wrote it in this kind of way that I know works on the fretboard or, or for an instrument. So let's talk about what I'm doing with the voicings for a second. So I decided to use, you know, all three note triad shapes, but with a lot of inversions. So this is an A chord. I have the low E, that's the five of the chord, and then the root and the third. Um, I have string six, string three, and string two. That's an A chord. And then this is an A chord where it's the root, the third, and the fifth, open root, third, fifth. So I'm going, and I got this kind of, this rhythm going, this is my A minor. 
This is E major with the third in the bass, and then that third moves down to the minor. So I like that a lot. Do, do. It's like a moving bass line. Do. So I'm using these inversions and these, these you know, finger picking three note triads. Um, and then I move down to the, this is B minor with the five in the bass, and then that moving note in there. And then this is D major with the three in the bass. So D over F sharp, and then that moves down. So you get this really cool moving bass line stuff. And then I'm back where I started. So it loops really nicely. I'll just play just that. Okay, as for the bridge or the chorus, I don't know what, you know, it would be exactly at. Kind of a chorus, I guess. Super catchy. I feel like that melody is probably from straight up from another song. It came way too easily. Um, so it has to be from something else that I was hearing. At least part of that melody. If you know what it is, put it in the comments, please. I modulated, and that's the interesting thing that I did here. And also wanted to use zero of that chromaticism, right? Just like super catchy and, and poppy without that connectivity stuff uh, for the contrast, right? It'd be too much. I mean, we can do whatever we want, right? Sometimes we won't, if you want it all the time, you want it all the time, but I really wanted something just really fresh. So I have a G major chord here. What I did is when I landed on that D, instead of going to D minor, I went to D7. And that was that funny part where we go, uh, I can't remember what I said even. That's right, you heard me right. So, uh, da, da. Um, so I create, I did a D7 and a D7. These are both D7 over F sharp. D7, D7. Da. This is a great example of voice leading right here, where I have bum, bum, that moving there and this moving into. They're both moving into the G chord, right? Like ultimate resolution, contrary motion. So. So I ha I just went D7 into G, and then I'm just in that key. So I went G, and then this is D over F sharp, and then I went to A, um, yeah, A over E. Uh, so basically it's this. So I'm sorry, I didn't modulate to G. I modulated to the, went to the chord G, but I, it's officially the, the key of D uh, because I'm going on the four chord and then, uh, and then A. So if we want to think of it that way, this is an A chord and then this is a G chord and then G again and then D again and then A again and then so same thing twice in a row. Here's what it would look like just normal. With these chord shapes. Okay, so I really like choosing very specifically what those notes are, especially three notes. That's just me. That's just, you know, I'm using the finger style and everything. I like to strum sometimes, but but not as not as often. You know, I feel I'm I'm kind of trying to orchestrate here. Like if it was I'm really thinking of each note as a singer and where their notes move. So this turnaround thing is really fun because we're talking about modulating. So we have to get back to A now, the, the key of A. So I went to D, you know, in the key. So um and again, just so you know, I'm always aware. I'm always aware of where those melody notes are. Um, if, if for nothing else, a fretboard kind of compositional um, guitar knowledge exercise, any song you're learning, Where's that melody in the chord? Why does it work? Do you see it in the chord you know, on the fretboard? And especially if we're composing chord progressions and interested in improvising, especially improvising, we basically have to do this, right? If I improvise over a D, a D minor chord, I have to really be seeing, ideally, the minor third da, da. what is what over every chord all the time so that helps quite a bit as well to modulate really smoothly if you want to go to another key d major we were in the key of a so d major and b minor are both what are called pivot chords that means they're in both keys we were in the key of a before and we modulated for that chorus part to D major. So in both those keys, you have the chord D and you have the chord B minor. So I used those to play both of those in a row and then went to E. 
sus, and then went to E major, and E major is not in the key of D, so it's the thing that finally signals, okay, we're actually modulating back. But it sounds smooth because you set those pivot chords before it. So more on that in other lessons for sure, but just kind of walking through what I did here. So that's it, kind of a haphazard lesson on songwriting. That one tip is what I wanted to show you, but I got carried away with wanting to write with it and finish with it and kind of explain everything else that I was doing uh, to some degree and just share with you the process. So there's no wrong way to do it, of course, at all. It's just with tools like this, and it's why I love songwriting so much, the tools and the knowledge and the theory and the techniques and the exposure and all that stuff is just to get us going. It's just to feel like we're not running out of, of juice, running out of energy, running out of inspiration. So there's no wrong way to do it. Um, it's just cool to have a couple tangible academic concepts to play with. And still, of course, our emotions, our intuition are the thing that guide us in the end. You still have to feel it. Well, you don't have to feel it, but I think the goal and the most satisfaction comes from hitting, hitting that option that you decide to go with in the song and you feel like yes that is the right thing so for me personally no you know no harm in having a bunch of academic theory options to play with and make sure that intuition is honed enough to know when it hits you emotionally and then you grab it and, and go with that so i love the combination of those two worlds the raw 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 creativity and then the ultra overly intellectualized um, theory stuff and just kind of mixing between them all the time till you get something that you're happy with. So let me know if you like the songwriting stuff and I will definitely do more of it in the future. The creativity stuff, the combining theory with how we actually use it to write and be creative and maybe extract things from other songs that we like. Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss next week's lesson. It's going to be really cool. So I look forward to seeing you then and happy practicing and happy songwriting. So I drive out of town and got the music loud. That's right, you heard me right, so I drive out of town, I have the windows...